So here's example 20 in the differential equations topic. We're on the third of our examples on non-homogeneous differential equations, second order differential equations. Okay. This is if you haven't seen the other ones before, go back and check out example 18. That's where it starts off. Um, so we've had a look at what happens when the f of f function, the, the right hand side, is polynomial. We've had a look in ex example 19, what happens when it's a trigonometric function. And now we're going to have a look at what happens when the right-hand side of the equation is an exponential function. Now, the the ones that we're going to come across are all just going to be e to the power something x. And I put nx. And the important thing, again, just like the trig terms there, is that our matching particular integral is going to match that uh, number there. So n is not a constant, n is whatever the uh, original f of x here. So in, in this case here, n is 4. That means my particular integral is also going to be e to the power 4x. The only difference is that we're going to introduce a constant. Again, I put k here, but I'm going to, just going to go with the capital C, D, E, you know, that kind of stuff there that we did before. So in actual fact, it's the simplest of all of the three, as you can imagine, with uh, our exponential functions, and the whole solution is actually a wee bit lighter than the previous ones. You'll be glad to know, keep the uh, simplest till the last. Again, the other good thing is that the actual structure, the, the algorithm of solving this is exactly the same. The only difference is, as we'll find out when we introduce the particular integral. So, we start off assuming that we're actually dealing with a um, homogeneous equation. So we're assuming that we've got d squared or d2y by dx squared minus 6 dy by dx plus 9y equals 0. In other words, our auxiliary equation is going to be formed substituting m, m squared minus 6 m plus 9 equals 0. And if we just do a wee check of the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac it's going to be 36 minus 4 times 9. Uh, so again, we're going to have um, equal roots. That's good. 36 take with 36 is 0. What does that mean? It means we're going to have one solution. So we're going to have m minus 3, m minus 3 equals 0. So the solution, only one solution repeated solution we've got is m equals 3. If it's got a repeated solution, real solution, uh, then we're going to use the form again, y equals a plus bx times e to the power uh, mx, whatever we've just worked out, which in this case is 3. You know, it's good to keep doing that, um, even though it seems a bit superfluous if we're working out the, the solution here. It's good when we're doing talking about complex roots, but also see if you write out this every time. If you write that every time, it just helps you remember them. That's one of the, the reasons why, uh, whether you like it or not, repetition helps us to build those uh, neural connections. Okay, so it might seem uh, pointless to keep writing out or duplicating things, but the more we duplicate it, the more we'll remember it. So really what we're saying is here that our complementary function is going to take the form of this repeated solution y is equal to a plus bx times e to the power mx. And we know that m here is 3. So we're saying that that's e to the power x. Okay, so uh, we're going to, again, bag that. We're going to see that later on. Um, and we're then going to say for the particular integral, try. What we're going to try this time? Well, we remind ourselves that f of x on the right-hand side is an exponential function, is e to the power 4x, which means that I'm going to try as my particular integral e to the power 4x with some constant term. I've used a and I've used b, so I'm just going to stick in a c there. But crucially, we have to use 4x because that's the 
uh, value that we had in the original right hand side. This is the easiest of all the, the processes that we've had to do because we have to do two uh, derivatives uh, and effectively here we've got the, the first derivative is c times e to the 4x multiplied by the derivative of the inside function 4x so it becomes 4c e to the 4x and the second derivative if we differentiate that same thing again multiplied by 4 we get 16c e to the 4x and again we substitute into the original equation substitute into equation one which is up here so it's let's remind ourselves what it is here we go d2y by dx squared minus 60y by dx plus 9y equals it was just e to the 4x wasn't it there was no constant term um so we substitute in For the second derivative, we've got 16 c e to the 4x. Then we've got minus 6 lots of the first derivative, 4 c e to the 4x. And then we'll add 9 lots of the first uh, original particular integral y, which is c e to the 4x equals e to the 4x. Now, nicely, uh, here you can see that all of these terms have a common factor of 4x, and we've also just got the one constant c. So if we multiply that out, 16c e to the 4x minus 24c e to the 4x is negative 8. C, um, c times e to the negative 4x plus 9 actually just gives you 1. In other words, c has got to be 1 because the co comparing the coefficient uh, and therefore we've got our value. c is 1. What does that mean? Uh, so you can see here that that's much easier than the other uh, two examples here. Uh, so if you see a little exponential in your f of x, you go, yay, this is going to be a little bit easier. Although easy is a subjective term, I appreciate. So what we can say i.e. our particular integral was c e to the 4x so basically we're saying that for this one c is 1 so we're actually just going to use 4x which means I'm ready to write out my general solution and the general solution remember is the complementary function plus the particular integral I'm just keep writing that out because it helps me to remember uh, so we've got y equals the original complementary function a plus bx multiplied by e to the power 3x. Remember we did that way back up. And we're going to add to that our particular integral of e to the power 4x. And there we have our general solution for a exponential function. Okay, give it a go. That's us done all three, and we'll take. We'll have a look at where we're going to go from that. We've got to have a look at a few special cases, uh, and of course, we need to also find out particular solutions for these, not just general solutions. So, uh, keep trying these ones, and then we'll go on to the next level. Okay.